TICTA came up with recommendations, as they often do. The IRS did not agree with any of them related to the S-Corporation compliance piece. So we will see what happens in the future. I do, again, think the extreme amount of funding for compliance initiatives in the Inflation Reduction Act, I think that, I honestly think that this is going to be an area of concern over the next couple of years. So now I want to talk about how reasonable comp and either paying less than it or more than reasonable comp, how it impacts the overall tax situation of the taxpayer. So in this case, we're going to assume the S corporation has net income of about $200,000. We're going to also assume reasonable comp is $100,000. Now, you might be yelling at your monitor and say, Tom, 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 how did you figure out the 100,000? That's what I want to know. We, trust me, I will show you how we get these numbers, but we're laying the foundation for that. Now in this example, let's assume that they got advice from their tax advisor, TikTok, whatever, somewhere that says, just pay yourself $50,000, no big deal you'll save a lot of tax, right? And they do, and that's the first tax benefit. When you underpay reasonable comp, you save payroll taxes, right? So on $50,000, they saved about 15.3%. I'm not that great at math in my head. Approximately, that's $7,500 in Social Security and Medicare tax. So they are saving themselves payroll tax. But the risk is that the IRS can, if they took distributions, could say, no, no, no. Some of those distributions are actually wages, right? They're not in compliance right now. They are saving tax, but they're doing it in a way that puts them at risk. I really believe reasonable comp, you can save tax and be in compliance if you do the situation correctly. Now, the other situation is social security benefits reduction. So this is where I'm gonna pause and complete the story of my examination. I use this story a lot because it really shows the danger of bad advice. So the reason I knew in my case that there was a reasonable comp problem, or I suspected it, was the taxpayer told me he worked full time in the business. He netted about one hundred and thirty to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, but he only paid himself twenty four thousand dollars. So if we just stress test, is it reasonable for a white collar professional who works full time in a business to pay themselves? $24,000 a year, probably not. And what happened was after the examination closed, and he actually did get the wage advice from his accountant. His accountant advised him to pay $24,000 a year. Now, he told me he had been doing it for 20 plus years. The, the gentleman was in his mid 50s. So after we wrapped up the audit, I emailed him, said it was done. I said, by the way, I've, I don't know if you've ever checked your Social Security benefits on SSA's website. You know, I'm a little concerned about your salary. I, I suggest you do so. I guess on the link. He, within 10 minutes of that email, I got a call. Tom, I have no benefits. How am I going to ever retire? It was a hard conversation, but I punted. I'm like, you need to talk to your accountant about that. And you need to reevaluate the salary you're paying yourself. I said, it's not reasonable. You might be saving payroll tax, but you're hurting yourself long-term. It's a balancing act. 